Want to make your yard stand out? Well, there's a completely different kind of garden that could make your home shine. We are talking about creating a butterfly garden. To find out how you can attract beautiful butterflies to your yard, we are joined by Debbie Barson and Carol Chandler from Barson's Greenhouse in Westland. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. The idea of butterflies just being in the yard sounds delightful to me, <laughs> but I'm not really familiar with a butterfly garden, Debbie. What is a butterfly garden and how do you start one? Well, you want to pick a sunny spot in your yard okay. and then you want to decide what butterflies do you want to try to attract. Mm -hmm. So you want to have a combination of the right host plants and the right nectar plants to the butterflies that you'd like to attract to your yard. Mm -hmm. And when you're planting it, you want to group your certain host plants together. It makes it easier for the butterfly to find them. So if you're doing milkweed for the monarchs, put it in a cluster together. You're doing like we have fennel, rue, parsley for all for the black swallowtails. Wow. Kind of put them in a cluster together. And then nectar plants for the butterfly to nectar on. All right, so let me, let's break it down again. Nice sunny spot. Yep. The right plants to attract the right kinds of butterflies. Mm -hmm. All right, so tell us about some of the plants that we have here. We've got a lot going on. Yeah. Can we talk about the monarchs? Okay. So monarchs are one of the most popular butterflies to raise. Um, everybody recognizes the beautiful orange when they see it. They feed exclusively on milkweed. It's the only thing that their caterpillars will eat. Um, thankfully, we've got 11 different species that are native to Michigan. Uh, when most people come in, we recommend, recommend either swamp or butterfly weed because they don't spread as invasively as some other species. Yeah. Right here, we've got a swamp milkweed with a little caterpillar right on the end right there for you. That is amazing. It's like a, it's a ca actual caterpillar here in well, the studio. It's we have an egg that was just uh, laid on a uh, oh, milkweed. I see it right And there. then yesterday, this one here had just hatched. Where is it? Oh. It's right here on the, I gotta get my glasses. Oh, okay. <laughs> this little guy fell off here. That is amazing to me. Ah, he's moving around. Yeah. This is <laughs> this is awesome. So, Carol, tell me what about black swallowtails? What are they? Black swallowtails are usually what I recommend for beginners because they have a much more varied diet compared to monarch caterpillars. They'll eat uh, just about anything in the carrot family. So um, right now we've got this little guy here on bronze fennel. They'll feed on any type of fennel, dill, parsley, rue. Um, a lot of people find them on their dill or their celery plants in the garden. So this one may be one people already recognize. Okay. Wow. This is Kind of crazy. So, Debbie, tell us about the butterfly habitat at Barson's. Uh, it was built in 2012 by Brenda Dezak, and this is a book here that Brenda has written, and she started it to educate people. It's all native butterflies to Michigan. It's free to come into. There's no charge. We do have a donation box if you would like to leave a donation. Uh, we give out caterpillars people take home to raise. They raise them in little habitats in the house because only one butter caterpillar out of 100 will make it to butterfly. Okay. Mostly because of birds eating them. That's what, that was going to be my next question. So if I got a caterpillar from you guys, would it turn into a butterfly? Would I watch the cocoon process? Mm -hmm. So you just don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, if you raise it in a habitat in the house, it will. For sure it'll turn into a, a, a butterfly? Yeah. Oh, my. Uh, we have habitats, one by one foot, two by one foot, and you can either put the plant right into the habitat to raise it on, or you can cut off the plants in the yard and put them in a water source and put them in the water thing. Very so nice. The main thing they have to have, if you raise them inside, is a clean cage and fresh food all the time. Okay, this so. is amazing. I'm sure I'm going to get a text from my mom and she's going to be like, you didn't know that already? So <laughs> We have handouts to get to people you. too so they can know which butterfly Thank goes you. to which nectar plant. That's awesome. So Debbie, let everyone know where Barson's is located and how they can find out more about your greenhouse. Uh, we're on Merriman Road. We've been there 42 years. We're between Ford and Warren and we're right about seven miles straight north of Metro Airport. So we're pretty easy to find right on Merriman. Well, thank you both, Carol and Debbie, for being with us. This has been a, a joy for me. This was so much fun.